all creation, God's words was love. That love has been lavished upon you, not because you did anything to earn it, but because it is God's great gift to you. Live in that love and bring peace to others. Amen. Please stand for the call to worship. In the fullness of time, God gave us Jesus that we might understand God's love. God's love in present continue in the disciples, bringing again the messages of hope and reconciliation. Let the bread and the wine we receive today give us strength and courage to do God's will. In our lives, the strength and be a witness to God's eternal love for all God's people. Amen. Amen. Let's quiet our hearts, center our soul call on the Holy Spirit, and be in the moment with Jesus. Please help me with the opening prayer. Lord, throughout the world today, Christians are sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We come together with a bountiful table set in the midst of struggle and strife. Help us to receive the elements of bread and wine for the nourishment of our souls and for the strengthening of our weakness to love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the reading from 2 Timothy verse, chapter 1, verse 4, 1 through 14, and this will be read by Reverend Perrin. Good morning. Second Timothy 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you of, to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God. God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to our, his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I, um, I was appointed a, a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I'm not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold up to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. God, the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living 
in us. The word of God for the people of God. We have no music. We'll have the sanctuary singers. Okay. Well, I think we do have music um, we today. We do have them here, actually. So let's get um, our heart centered for a selection from the sanctuary singers. Um, give thanks that it's another day that we are in his presence and that we live to see another week and we live to see another morning. So I'm going to ask you all to stand and let's give thanks to God for yet another day in his presence. Amen. And while the sanctuary singers get ready, remember this evening at 4 p.m. we do have our harvest celebration. So I'm going to encourage you to come out and bring a friend with you this evening.
Amen. God be the glory. Now it's time for the word of God. It comes from 2 Timothy 1, verse 5. I am reminded of your authentic faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, your mother Eunice. 2 Timothy 1, verse 5. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Certainly is a joy for me to be back with you here this morning. When I left here two Sundays ago, uh, we headed for St. Martin in the Leeward Islands. And I had no idea that Fiona was also going in that direction. But I thank God that in spite of the heavy winds and rains we experienced, they, they, we just had a wonderful time, just in spite of all that. Of course, yes, we lost power in the hotel on and off. And for two days, everything just closed down. But God's grace is always sufficient. What we lost in outdoor activities and entertainment began by getting to interact with the many of the staff members, you know, and share their stories. We also had a chance to watch a lot of television. So we, we took in the pomp and ceremony, as only the British know how to do it, as they laid Queen Elizabeth II to rest. But watching those ceremonies caused me to be engaged in a great kind of reflection. I reflected on the impact of the British crown on the history of the world over the years, the untold riches of the royal family, and the role of slavery and slave trade in the accumulation of those riches. Those were on my mind. The fact that justice will never be done unless and until Reparations take place in the British Empire to make whole the various peoples who suffered. I'm talking about people in Africa, in Asia, as far as Hong Kong, the Caribbean, and of course the southern parts of the USA before 1776. Queen Elizabeth goes down in history as the longest reigning monarch to have sat on the British throne. And putting politics and economics and sociology aside, we come to the place where religion enters the picture. Somewhere in the titles that Queen Elizabeth II holds, you will see these letters and the word Elizabeth R. Fid Def, F I D D E F. Elizabeth R. Fid Def. R stands for Regina. Fid stands for Fidei, and Def stands for Defensor. Fidei Defensor, Defender of the Faith. The new King Charles III will have those letters also after his name. Charles R, Charles Rex, Fid Def. Rex in Latin for King, and Regina in Latin for Queen. Fidei means of the faith, Defensor means defender. Elizabeth the Queen, defender of the faith. Charles the King, defender of the faith. And that title goes back to the year 1534, when King Henry VIII took over the control of the Church of England in what was called an act of supremacy. He broke away from the Roman Catholic Church and from the Pope of Rome as head of the church and defender of the faith. And that act made King Henry and all his heirs and successors supreme head of the Church of England. Not only is the monarch the queen of the commonwealth and so on, but the head of the church. So as I watch the, the proceedings surrounding the death and the national mourning of Elizabeth Regina, the death, pomp and the ceremony, the trooping of the colors, I was very much interested in the human side of all of that. Sons and a daughter had lost a mother. Sad little children had lost a grandmother and a great-grandmother. 
their grief was on full display. A nation had, uh, had lost its ruling monarch and the commonwealth had lost its symbolic head. So there was public mourning and, of course, private mourning. And many who were not even remotely related to the queen also felt a sense of grief and loss. What role was Christian counseling playing in all that? Were the religious leaders and chaplains offering personal, pastoral care behind the scenes to all who needed it? So these questions came to my mind as I sat there watching all this. A survey of the population of the UK in 2018 found 53.6% who identified as Christian. 6.2% belonged to other religions. And 40.2% are atheists. 40.2% are atheists. In 2019, over half of those between the ages of 20 and 29, 53.4% between the ages of 20 and 29 had no religion. These facts became increasingly stark to me in contrast to what I was seeing on display during the pomp and ceremonies marking the end of the reign of one who for 72 years was fed to death, defender of the faith. Because here on display were, were throngs of people, millions, observing respectful silence at given times, Packed cathedrals, toll bells, and the peals of the organ rang out as the stately hymns were sung. And everyone seemed to have known the hymns. Singing lustily, the day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. It's amazing how these familiar and often sung words can become even more significant and meaning in times like these. You know? They sang lustily. So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never, like earth's proud empires, pass away. Thy kingdom stands and grows forever, till all thy creatures own thy sway. And as I listened to that, I thought of the over 50% of young people, 20 to 29, who are not religious at all. They have no religion. They sang the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I not want. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear none ill, for thou art with me. People sang their faith, they sang their faith. They, they had to include, of course, the good Charles Wesley hymn. Love divine, all loves excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure, unbounded love, thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. They sang lustily. Finish then thy new creation. Pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. They sang lustily. Change from glory into glory. Till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee. Crowns, lost in wonder, love, faith. There is no doubt that the faith of a nation was on display as they said farewell to one whose title was Fid, Death, Defender of the Faith. But that certainly was not the display that Paul had in mind when he was writing to his protege, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1, verse 5. I am reminded of your authentic faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. Two weeks ago, I, I defined faith as the life of God in us. The life of God in us. And I will further define it as the spark of God which is kindled within us from our very birth and which was prepared for us by God like God's baby shower even before our birth. 
John Wesley calls that prevenient grace. The grace of God that we receive even before we are even conscious of God. And God's prevenient grace is still waiting on those 50 point something percent of people between 20 and 29 who are still not conscious of God. They say they have no religion. God is still waiting on them with prevenient grace. Paul says that there are certain things that come to his mind when he thinks about his young protege, his son in the gospel, Timothy. Paul expressed to Timothy the fact that he keeps Timothy in mind, in prayer, day and night. It seems that the, the last time they, they, they parted, young Timothy must have, been, must have broken down in tears. Uh, and that last parting seemed to have been playing on Paul's mind day and night. You know, he remembers the last time they parted. And so Paul was impressed with that young man and he, he groomed him as his successor. One who would carry on in his footsteps after he himself could no longer carry out the mission as a preacher and teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul knows that the next time he sees Timothy, it will be a joyful reunion. So he longs for that to happen. You see, there is something about Timothy, that young man, that is very special. And Paul says it, it is, it is Timothy's authentic faith. Sincere faith is the word that is used in the New Revised Standard Version. Genuine faith in the King James Version. And here in the Common English Bible, authentic faith. Paul realizes that Timothy's faith did not just spring out of nowhere. For he says, your authentic faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. I'm sure that this faith is also inside you, passed down from one generation to another. It is at this point that we should pause and try to identify who it was that first led us to the spiritual pathway. Who was it that first showed us the things of God? Who was it that first led us to Jesus and his love? And I give God thanks this morning for my grandmother, my mother, for the Sunday school teachers that I had. From the time I knew myself, I, I knew that there was something called prayer because I saw my grandmother praying from morning to night and reading the Bible. My mother would go to the Anglican church and she would come home every Sunday at the 7 o'clock service was their communion and she would be singing beautiful hymns. And I was still a very impressionable child. And so these were the things that brought me. And then I, we went to Sunday school every, every Sunday. If it was raining, if it was not raining. And if you were sick, you had to go because you can be healed at Sunday school. <laughs> These are the people, <laughs> these are the people who, who, who led me first to understand something about the love of God. I don't know who it is in your situation, but you know, they, they, they first guided our first tottering steps towards heaven. It's time for us to pause and celebrate them. You know, today we, the whole world is celebrating uh, communion. And they are still with us in the communion of saints. If they have gone on to glory, we should give God thanks for them. If they are still with us, still teaching Sunday school and leading the youth ministry and anything that they're doing, you know, still in the day school. Many, many children don't go to church anymore, but the only connection they have with God and church is the teachers who are still faithful teachers in their schoolroom. They can't preach about Jesus in the classroom, but their life can be a book for those children to read, you know, the faith that they have on display. So, yes, if they, if, if they are still with us, I want us to really take some time to think of what they mean to us and, you know, where you are today on your spiritual journey. So this is your homework for the week. Reach out to them if they are still with us and tell them 
what their life has meant to you and your spiritual life. That's your homework. Faith is a gift of God, a gift of the Holy Spirit. And Paul says to Timothy that he must not just take it for granted. If it is a spark of grace that is kindled from birth, and if at some point in your life it was recognized by someone else, uh, as in Timothy's case, confirmed in you as some kind of ordination or laying on of hands, then don't just let it sit there as a glowing ember, you know, giving you a warm, fuzzy feeling, but fan it into a blazing fire, a flame. There, let it fall, thy glory burn with inextinguishable blaze, and trembling to its source return in humble prayer and fervent praise. Jesus, confirm my heart's desire to work and speak and think for thee. Still let me guard the holy fire and still stir up the gift in me. See, God didn't give us a spirit that is timid, but one that is powerful, loving, and self-controlled. You've heard those words in other ways. And there's one more question. To whom are we imparting our faith in the same way that Grandma Lois and Mother Eunice imparted their faith to young Timothy? And how are we doing it? Let us pray. God, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me, all his wonderful passion and purity. O thou spirit divine, all my nature refined till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Amen. Now. now we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is right. And, good, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fail, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power, power and, and might, might. Heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth are full of your, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hunger, and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of this suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, died. has died. Christ, Christ is, risen. is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. To your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Together, eternal, eternal God, Father, we give you thanks for this holy ministry in which, which you have given, given yourself for us. us. Grant Amen. that we may we go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give, give ourselves for others. others. In the name, the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we take and we eat in remembrance of Christ died. Glory for Lord Jesus Christ. Broken. Preserve you unto everlasting life. Take and eat in remembrance of Christ died. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ said, preserve you unto everlasting life. Drink and be truly thankful. Go in peace. May the God of peace go with you. Amen. We'll continue with another selection from the Sanctuary Singers. <laughs> no?
choir this morning. You all know the box is in the back of the sanctuary, and for those who are online, can always do the online option of e-offering or mail it into the sanctuary. Let us pray. Gracious and giving God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day and pray as we give them that all you will kind in your deeper faith and a stronger commitment. We acknowledge that some of us have found our way back to you on our own. Others of us have lived into a faith that surrounded us from the time we were born, lived out in parents, grandparents, siblings, and spouse. However, this faith found its way into our hearts or into our DNA. Help us to kindle it to flame that the world might be set on fire with your love and compassion. In Christ we pray, amen. I just wanted to, before I begin preaching, ask that I'm talking to the lay leader about this, but ask that this afternoon at the harvest, we take a special offering for the victims of the hurricane in, in different places that it has struck. We know that the United Methodist Church is um, Committee on Relief is always at work, even before anyone else gets there. We are usually the first persons to be on, on the spot to help. So any kind of offering we can take and send to support that is a part of our participating in the healing work of God. It's needed at this time. So the benediction, as God has poured God's love on you, go now in peace to bring God's love to all people. Rest in the confidence of God's abiding presence with you and be joyful in your service to God. Go in peace and love. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.